Hello everyone, I'm gonna hope you can hear me, because it's been a long time since I've streamed. So, like always, uh, if you hear like echoing in the background, that usually just means because I'm one person, and I'm the one that's moderating this whole stream, yeah, you're gonna hear background because I need to make sure that it's working. So, anyways, um, <laughs> anyways, uh, yes, we are going to be working on Code.org's App Lab, um, brushing up on some new features since Code.org updated it. For example, they finally added an image upload uh, file section, so we can upload images, or the person could upload images, and it can go to the data browser. So, we're going to go ahead and be and taking a look at that. Um, what else are we going to take a look at? Uh, hmm. Well, we're also going to be taking a look at some comments because I could tell that a lot of people wanted videos of these, uh, especially since a lot of people wanted to get the the link for or a shareable link on like on the app. Exactly. So let's see here. All right. So. Yeah, uh, a lot of people, due to high demand, uh, have been asking, where's the link? How can I remix this if there's no link? And I've got a ton of comments about it. Uh, and, like, and yeah, and people are really getting mad at it. Um, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so in this live stream, Yes, the link for chat should be there. Unfortunately, I will put it at the, well, actually. Um, let's see here. I can tell this stream is not off a uh, to a good start. There we go. That should work. Okay, it should now be in the chat. Should be. I'm gonna hope it is. Okay, so I think I just wasted enough time. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, yes, we're gonna be looking at those new features. We're gonna be fixing the code here on chat. And if anyone has any questions, of course, put it in the chat. Also, I'm going to treat any questions. Go ahead, and we can get started on that. All right. Okay, so let's get started. So we're going to go ahead and look at the new features that, of course, Code.org has. So since we have a chat program, we're going to go ahead and let's add it somewhere here. But first, if you don't know what this program is at all, because a lot of people were saying, what is this? And I didn't really get it. It's basically just a chatting service. So if we go hunt here on accounts, we can see that there are username and passwords. So of course, when you're making an app, never, of course, expose the account information. But since this is an experimental app, uh, technically not live, then yeah. So let's see here. Let's see. Okay. So of course, chat seems a little unoptimized, and I can tell we just made this in 2018. All right, so let's go ahead and fix this. Let's go ahead and do ktech, and let's add a little more words in it. Hmm. 
Alright. So, in the previous videos that we've made, we've made it where it was more friendly to the user. Added border radiuses so it just looks a little more friendly instead of pointy. And we've added fonts just so it doesn't look too basic. So we're going to go ahead and let's see what's a good call. I prefer Comic Sans. A lot of people don't, and I do not care. So we're going to go ahead and this is still in beta. Huh. All right. So we're just going to do version 1.1, and we're going to take this out, the status unstable, and we're just going to put it side by side. And let's just make it smaller. There we go. Okay. Of course, we have the login, the login success page, and receiving messages, and so on, so on, so on. And it looks like that we just... Well, I haven't went through this app for a long time. Okay. And here are the updates. Alright, cool. Anyways, we're going to remove the updates. Just remove it entirely. So, if we go here, clearly we will be able to use the debug co uh, console. So, basically, I'm going to treat this as what, like, you, like, people have never watched the other code.org app tutorials. So, if you hear me saying something and then you already know it, just ignore it because I'm just going to treat it as like if you were a new viewer. Anyways, the debug uh, console is basically like your errors page. It's basically going to it's basically going to tell you whether or not um for example, the on event refers to an ID which does not exist. It's because we deleted the screen meaning that the code or the button 12 doesn't exist anymore cuz you already deleted it. So this will really come in handy. So don't hide it. Um, don't, uh, yeah, don't hide it at all. Just use it because it does help a lot. So we can see here that line 23 is right here. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. Okay, so we see that we have no more errors. So let's go ahead and get to our accounts and let's go ahead and there we go. So we have that all set up. So let's say I want to send something to myself. So we'll just do sponge person and then test, test message, so on, so on. And then we'll just do send right there. And your message has been sent. Cool. So now I'll just receive it. And then there we go. So it looks like we haven't touched up on settings. So we will be working on that. And oh, we don't need updates anymore. Okay. okay. So here on the login section page we can add some decorations to it Wow, this is very old. Just looking at it. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of that. Okay. So I'm trying to make it a little more friendly for the user. Uh, when someone's using this, of course, it needs to be it needs to be clean to use so they're when they're clicking stuff it doesn't click on like this random thing so we can see here that 20 is there all right so if we go here to send i want to add an image so we're going to go here and do photo select so this is one of the newest features that they've added photo select is a pretty cool feature because of course you can upload images and then send it to a data browser so we're going to go ahead and use this, and we're going to, let's make it a little more friendly on here.
There we go. And let's change the color just so it's more nicer. Actually, no, we'll not add that. Instead, we'll put some type of text here on the left side. Right here. And then we're just going to call this status one camera. Okay. So when you're sending a message, of course we want to add the message of or the image. So basically I'm just gonna go ahead and go all the way to the right and image. There we go. And I'm going to find the image URL. There we go. Get image URL. And oh, and you see there's only one that says photo select one. That's clearly that one. So we'll go ahead and get that. But when we do that, we're going to set text Actually, wait a minute. We already got the image, which is perfect. Okay, I know what we can do. Um, so on the read records tab, we're going to go ahead and go straight to messages. So what we're going to do is verify it. So this one takes a little longer because it needs to read the records. But in theory, we're going to see if the information was passed over safely and perfectly. So I went ahead and copied and pasted the this whole um the whole text on like username from username subject so on and I'm gonna input it here. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see what's going on. Hold on. If the text Ah, I just realized it. Okay. So. Actually, no, wait a minute. We don't need to copy and paste that. So if. If text area 2. Verifies with the text. And I just realized I just made a mistake on here. Hmm. Message. There we go. So if message equals the text area 2, then that's good. Otherwise, well, sorry, do we add, not this one, but okay, we don't have a status. Okay. So we're just going to use the status one underscore camera for now. Feel free to rename it if you wish. So we'll put it on the else because we want the text to uh, fail if uh, if it's not if it's not able to verify it. Most likely, it will be able to verify it, but just in case, then that will be a feature on on it. So I'm going to copy and paste this whole thing. And I'm going to go ahead and get the, I'm not really worried on the subject line, uh, user accounts name. So this is the two username, basically. So let's see. Text input five. Okay. So if we go ahead and just do text input five, and that's username. And if that verifies it, then yes. And or else it'll just say fail to send. Now, 
You're probably wondering why I'm just doing this. It's just more time, right? Well, I'm trying to get the code to realize where, uh, which data section to go to or which data ID to go to. Because if I just did only one, like, oh, verify username and then sponge person, then it will, it will still not know whether or not it's still not, it wouldn't still know where to send it exactly to. But if we can use t two of these and for it to for it to verify it, it'll be able to figure out which ID it is. Uh, so that is how we are able to get the code.org um, login system to work. Or not the internal uh, login system, but the that's how we are able to log in to, uh, to your app if you watch the previous videos on how to register an account, how to log into an account on chat or this app. So we're going to go ahead and since we got the message and username, then I'm going to go ahead and see if we can get an image. So there's image. So if it's able to if it's able to detect an image onto on from the data data browser, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this. Basically, that's just saying there's nothing inside. So if there's nothing inside, then we're going to say then we're it's not going to do anything basically. But if it does find something inside, then what we're going to do is hide the element from here. Photo select. So we'll find photo select right here. And then we're going to say image, image attached. We'll just do that. Image attached and sent. Why do we have a console log? We don't need that. Um, and then Text area 2 will say your message has been sent. So I'm guessing we're just going to be using the text area 2. So yeah, we got that all set up. Basically, we're going to leave this. And actually, you know what? To make it easier on us, we're going to go put a console log that says no image found. Continuing to... Oops, got to fix my grammar. No image found. Continuing to send. And then right here, I'll just be the opposite. Image found. So basically, the console log is just going to show up on the debug uh, console saying that uh, it, this image was sent. So, of course, when that's done, so we're going to set a timeout on here. And then 3000. And we're going to show the element and hide the text. So photo select one. And we'll just clear that. OK. So the code looks a little messy. It is. But we are going to fix that. Uh, let's go see if this works now. So what are the accounts we got? I can tell that people are using this because I can see that uh, someone else created one. I just noticed that. All right. So here we go. We're at send. So I want to send this person to test because, you know, test is my friend. So. I want to show him this funny picture of something, and then I want to say, uh, yo, test, what up? Honestly, I don't know you, but look at this image, period, done. Cool, we did that. So we were able to do that. But now I want to attach an image. So I'm going to go ahead and actually hold on.
All right. The screen's going to black out for a bit. That is normal. Okay. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click the camera. And we're going to go ahead and let's use this one to capture. Okay. So basically, we attached an image, but we don't know whether the image was attached. That's why we've added this code. So it will tell us whether or not the image was actually attached. So we're going to go ahead and click send. Oops, something happened. Failed to send. Kind of curious if it... Nope, it got it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and check that out later and see what's going on. But basically, what you've just done is that you've just attached an image. Perfect. And clearly right here, it sends... It creates its own um, file through code.org. And we can see it right here. So we have that all set up. Now, we're going to try to figure out what's going on with the fail to send later. But we're going to deal with that later. Now, with the image, we're going to go ahead and see if the receiver is able to look up the image. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to receive. And if they have an image, we're going to put it in the corner right here. Image 2 is right here. Okay, so let's see here. Where's receive? So when button 9 is clicked, it will set the text area and all of that on there. And it knows which specific code it is because there's a an ID um, identifier. So it knows which um, hmm, time sent. Cool, we got that all set up on that part. So what I'm going to do is, since it knows which data it is, then I'm going to go to set image URL. Now set image URL, we're going to go to image 2. And we're going to, I'm just going to borrow this read records, by the way. And I'm going to try to put it in here. Ooh, that did not like it. There we go. So... Of course, it's called image, so we're going to go ahead and copy that and paste it, or just type it in, doesn't matter. Go. And image 2, perfect. We got that set up. Cool. Now, of course, if it's not able to find an image, it's just going to blink out. Totally fine. So, let's log in as the test and test 2. Receive. Whoa, wow, cool. The image is found. Nice. What up? Honestly, I don't know you, but look up this image. And we got an image. Wow, that is so cool. Cool. So basically, we just we were able to do something called file sharing. And file sharing is like when you know when you are on Skype, Messenger, and so on. Let's say I just want to delete it though. Deleted it. Cool. So message is gone. And that's still there because we haven't told it to, to, you know, go away. But, uh, yeah. Basically, we just created, like, a some type of file sharing system, which is pretty nice. Okay. So, this live stream is basically going to be long. Because I want to redesign this whole chat system. So yeah, so join me for the ride. But if you really just wanted to take a look at that image setup, go ahead. You can leave, but um, if you want to see and maybe, I don't know, add suggestions on the chat, go ahead on what to add on here. All right, so it's red. I don't know why it's red. So we're going to make it a little light blue. All right, let's give chat a motto. Perfect service.
perfect use. Actually, no. Um, chat anywhere, everywhere, with everyone, with everyone. without going anywhere. Instead of calling this chat, why won't we just call this air? Air. Let's go ahead and rename everything on that. Alright. So, basically now, this is now called air. So, welcome to air. Cool, right? Wow, air. It's a good name, I gotta say. Alright, now I'm checking the analytics on the channel and I just noticed that... Ah. Ah, oh, that's fun. That is fun. Okay. Um... Okay. Let's keep going. So, let's go ahead and add some type of font. Of course, you want to add fonts because you don't want your app to look a little boring. And since the mo we don't want the motto to over sat um to over um uh, we don't want it to be the main subject. We don't want the emphasis to be put on that text. We're just gonna put air right here. We'll go here, and you'll notice that there is a link to image right here. So, basically, you can provide a link from the images here. Um, so, let's see. Okay. So, basically, on here, if you want to add, let's say, an image URL. Let's say I want to do a picture of... I'll just do a background image, anything. Oop, I spelled that wrong. Okay, so let's say I want to do something like this. Ooh, pumpkin, right? Cool. Royalty free. So I can actually go here and type it and click uh, open image in a new tab. And here we have the image the URL. You can also just copy in the U image URL. There's also these ones, and then we can just open the image in a new tab. And we have the image URL. So here's the thing. Why don't I want to, why wouldn't I recommend this? If I were you, if I were you on the link to image, do not use this at all. My recommendation for you is do not attach an image uh, or do a link to image. Here's why. You don't know who's changing that image. In HTML and CSS, and by the way, there's another live stream for HTML and CSS. But you can go ahead and check that out. That is tomorrow at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But n never... Never link an image from another website um, to, from a URL. Reason being is that you don't know who is controlling that. They can easily change that image and use the same URL. And it could be an inappropriate image. It could be something that's not even associated with your site. So even though the image is that image that you found on Google Images, it can change because it's getting it from the, the source. The source can easily change it that fast. So I would really, really be careful with this. Really be careful with this. So, or just save the image. And of course, give credit to whoever made the image. Uh, put the license. For example, you can use Creative Commons. Creative Commons is a great resource uh, to finding images and getting the licensing rights. It's free to use. Check it out. All right, so I want a cloud. Cool, a cloud. 
I love clouds. Sometimes. Let's put it up here. That is our new logo, Air. Alright. All copyrights reserved 2020. Let's get rid of that and do all copyrights reserved 2020 Air. In the Air messaging. I'm going to hope that this is not a real company. <laughs> Because sometimes these companies are real. I'm just not thinking of it. Alright, so let's... No, you know what? Let's just keep this in the center. Okay, so when you're using an app, you want to get straight to the point. You want to get straight to log in, you're done. So see the login and the start button. I'm going to leave it here, but we're going to put the login here. I want to get straight to the point. I want everyone to use the app instantly. No questions asked on it. So please enter your login information. And let's go ahead and do that font. There we go. Cool. So let's go ahead and give it a border radius. Let's make it a little more friendlier. And always add a placeholder so people know what to do. Username and password. And I'm going to go ahead and put the login button right here. And we'll do login. This text right here, let's go ahead and center it. And then just do status one. Okay, see this login button? We're going to get rid of this, finally. And don't delete it yet, but we're going to grab it. So text input 1 and text input 2. Just, just So I'm just going to do 12, 22, yeah. But on the menu screen, we're going to do text input 1 on the username and text input 2. We're basically just changing the names. Status 1 is the new um, text for this. Actually, I'll check that one later. Login, text input 1, 2, and then 4. Text input 4. Or, I mean, sorry, button 4. Uh, and we will go here. Login, button 4. Okay, hold on. We'll just, well, we'll just get rid of it. Menu screen, button, 4. We did it. Cool. Let's make the username and password a little longer because I don't know how long people's username and password they prefer to use. Okay, we got that set up. Um, let's see here. And we'll put right here on the... Right here. And let's change the color because, you know, want to change it up a little. We'll do don't have an account. Or, actually, that's too long. We'll just do register for an account here. Let's make it a little bigger. And I want to add a different button here, but I can't think of anything. But we're just going to do that. Alright, so register for an account here. Cool. So that's button 1. So we'll deal with that later. Now we need to figure out how the login system works on here. So let's decrypt this. On button 4. 
it will read the records from the account and then username will do text input one password will do text input two then what it will do is set the text um, from text input one it will delete text input three and text input four now what is text input three and text input four That's the registration. So why is it grabbing the registration? I'm gonna get rid of this. It's gonna set the screen to the login success page. And basically, we're gonna go ahead and remove that. Okay, that's done. So let's try it out. Oh, line 9 does not exist. Let's get rid of line 9. Okay, so I can tell that people are using this. Login system works perfectly. Now, this is an issue. When someone logs out, what if they're using a public computer? Oh no, my account information has been exposed, basically. By the way, um, remember, when you're using... Oh, by the... Well, actually, yeah. Um, and I... Yeah, I already said this, actually. If you're creating an app on, let's say, code.org, and you are creating a login information, as an app developer, it is your job to protect the information of others. Basically, that means... Don't expose other people's account. Now you're probably wondering, why am I exposing other people's account on here? Well, if you're going to remix this application, of course, the information will be shown because it's in a video. Come on, right? This isn't new, by the way. A any app that I share, and it this is all experimental app. You shouldn't be using this for day-to-day -day use. This is only this is clearly only for you to experiment with, remix with. This is not for you to um, use for day to day use. I want people to create apps for their use. I want them to create it. I don't really want you to use this app because this app is already being is being picked on, experimented on from others. Create your own app, and you know, yeah. But anyways, yeah, just just want to keep that clear. But anyways, yes, I don't want this information to be exposed. So text input 1 and text input 2. Let's get rid of that. All right, this parentheses, because I seen a question like this with, on uh, one of the comments. Why do you have to add the parentheses blank? Basically, you need to have parentheses because that's the only way JavaScript is able to figure out what it what um, you're adding text, basically. If I didn't add this, it's going to give me an error, these parentheses. If I don't add it, it's just going to give me an error saying, hey, what is this? I don't know what this is. Is this code or is this text? So basically, now it should be able to clear it up. So please enter your login. Let's just do login for login to get started. There we go. All right. So what if I'm um sponge person, right? Oop. Oh well, yeah, and uh, I don't know. I'm a hacker. I don't know. I'm a hacker. Explanation point. All right. I want to get into this account. Oh, incorrect username or password. Let's go ahead and actually shorten the font size. Basically, why uh, we want to say incorrect username or password is technically we can just say incorrect username or incorrect password, but uh, we don't really want people that are trying to 
access someone else's account to figure out, oh, okay, I got the username, but I don't know the password. Or, oh, I got the password, but I don't have the username. Basically, we don't want people knowing which account is which. So that's why we just say incorrect username or password. That way, no, they, they're not able to tell what is what. Okay, so now let's fix the registration. So register for an account here. All right, you can notice that it's too bland. So I'm going to text input three, text input four. Okay, we're gonna grab that. Now, you know what? Let's delete the registration altogether. Uh, and then we'll do register. So this is login account. We're going to change this to menu screen. Basically, any code, any buttons that are here, you have to use the menu screen. Or you have to put it under the menu screen. This is not... There are different ways to, to organize your, um, your code. So feel free to organize it as you may wish. But... We're going to go ahead and just go to button one. I hope I should have copied and pasted it. Just kind of think about it so it's a little faster. Do, do, do. Yep, I should have copied and pasted this. Okay. All right, button one, and then it's going to register for that account here. All right. So now, if we go to register, this is the brand new one. Cool. Actually, let's delete it. And what we're going to do is duplicate it. So duplication really nice to use if you want to get the exact same layout so we're going to get rid of the version 1.1 and whatever and i'm going to make this a little smaller and i'm going to put it on the left wow cool and let's make this a little smaller so we can put it on the top i just deleted it did i uh, yeah i did it's okay i can get it back Need to put in the corner. So let's make this a little bigger. If you have your own logo, like you made one on Photoshop, Paint, um, I don't know, PowerPoint. Yes, you can create images on PowerPoint. Um, by the way. Uh, go ahead and use that. If you're if you're creating if you already have your own logo, but if you want to just create one from here, go ahead. Doesn't matter. Or if you just want to use text, doesn't matter. So now, since we have that set up, I want to put here on the right. Oh, actually, wait a minute. Instead of that. The, we'll just go he, put it on the right right here account registration and we'll go here and then to go back okay All right, so what we're going to do now is let's do a like new username and new password. So or actually, wait a minute, instead of that, let's add like, you know, those advertisements. Oop, not justify center. 
Okay. So we'll put here why er welcome to the air family. I feel like someone already got this company. I don't know that. I don't know. All right. So welcome to the air family. Chat with your friends, family. Chat with your friends and family, and it and chat with others during um and chat with others. Attach, no, not attach. Uh. You know what? That's all I can think of. Basically, we're trying to make this look more professional. Okay, so... Your username. And then your password. And let's center these just so it's more friendly. And just so I know what size to make these. Yeah, okay. So now we're going to... Hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what else we can add. So we have your username, your password, and let's do your security code. Now, you're probably wondering why do I want a security code? Or actually not security code, security word. Uh, don't worry, I'll ex elaborate on that later. But right now, uh, yeah, keep going with me. And... Y you know what, since we have time, let's do, this will be pro mode, so what type of account would you like, and let's make the font, or you know what, Instead of that, account type, we'll just do that. And then right here, it will say... It will say the free mode. And... Pro mode. Alright. So, of course, with every chatting service, there's always some type of paid service, all right? Zoom has a, a Zoom video conference has a, you have to pay, I don't know how much, just so you can get more people. Um, what's another one? Teams, I, I don't know about Microsoft Teams, but I know Skype does also. Uh, not a, I'm not sure it's the pro mode, but I think it's just a phone service, phone number, or get a phone number, I don't know. But, yeah. Every source has that. Now, with code.org, we don't have any type of, well, we don't have any type of um, payment options, even though the images that it provides us says, like, oh, put MasterCard, Visa, whatever. Uh, by the way, when you're making an app, uh, when you're making an app to code.org, for me, I don't recommend creating an app with a payment option, like where you enter a credit card number. I don't recommend that. Um, I'm not saying because, oh, well, you know. Well, I'm not saying, like, it's not trustworthy, but it's not safe. Because this data browser, anyone really could access it. I mean, all it takes is just one of, it's just, all it takes is just logging into your account on code.org. So, um, I don't, don't do that. Which is why. I will be creating a new currency on for air. Why? Because I clearly don't want to 
add like a credit card and whatever on here. So yeah, so account type, and we'll just make this a red. Okay, so remember this label 21, the one that we just left out. Then I'm going to go ahead and do register. And we'll do status too. And this will be registration. So now let's go ahead and add some stuff on here because clearly we don't want to get too far ahead. So if I were to click run, you'll notice that this much stuff comes up. This is basically saying like, hey, something's going on. I think something's going on with your code. So I'm going to, nope, not going to do, not trying to drag it, but I'm going to delete this, but copy it and create the account. And so when I click register for an account here, oh, we don't have that actually. So from the menu screen, oh, it's because we changed the name. So it's going to be registration now. So there we go. Cool. Now we need to tell it to go back and do all that stuff. So here on button 13, it will get text input 9 and text input 10. Text input 11. I just noticed that there are people uh, saying hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, just noticed that on the live chat. By the way, if there are any questions, go ahead and put it on the chat. I'd be happy to answer. But right here, set text drop down one. And we're going to do account type. Okay. And status two, let's clear it up. So status two, there we go. Okay, this code seems a little too unorganized. So we're gonna use functions. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a function right here, all right, on the top, doesn't matter. And this will be called clear, oh wait, clear registration. Now, Tell what you are making. Oh, okay. So basically, remember the. Um, actually, this wouldn't make sense if. Okay. Sum it up, just to sum it up. Basically, what we're doing is just making a chatting service. If you've watched the, uh, the older code.org app lab tutorials, then uh, you'll know what I'm talking about because that's chat that we're creating a chatting service basically skype but we're not making a video conference we're just doing like a regular chatting service uh basically we're trying to replicate and i'm not sure if a lot of people know this aim aol remember aol <laughs> oh i remember that anyways anyways uh so now i should probably tell you people what to how to write on a function so you'll notice that why does it say my function but the m is lowercase and the capital there's a capital f on the right well that is sort of etiquette when making javascript code now uh here, how should I explain this? So let's say I want to, I'm just going to get text here. Don't, you don't have to add this by the way, but basically what it, so let's say I want to say this code is, I'm trying to think of one. Section reg, or registration section. Let's say I want to say that, right? And I want to put that as a function. So basically, instead of saying, instead of doing regist here, three dashes, uh, instead of just doing registration section like that, if there is a space, if you want to add a space um, on it, then what you're going to do is lowercase the R, 
and then capitalize the S because that indicates that there's a space. But of course, you can't just do registration space section. You'll just put them together and just capitalize the that one. And anything on the first word would just be lowercase. Why? I don't know. I don't know why you have to do this. You don't have to, but this is just an etiquette on how to write it. But why? Eh, I don't know. I, I Yeah, I was trying to find a reason why because I, I didn't really understand it also. But, you know, really, you could just do capital C, capital R, doesn't matter. You know, do what you like. Okay, so we set up a function. So now when we set the screen on button 13, then we want to do that function. This is just to simply organize your code so you're not copying and pasting, copying and pasting, and so on. Clear registration. Cool. So we got that set up. Now let's look at this, this one because clearly we are this code is becoming unorganized on how to do this. So text input 9 and text input 10. And we need to add a little more. So we're going to do show text on here. Here we have time created. This is basically the account creation. So another thing that um, this is uh, what I used to do. You probably notice what the get user ID is. Uh, this one. So basically, what this is, is when it will, it, it creates an identifier, a user identification for whoever's using the app. Now, I use this because I wanted to do something like log, uh, I created something called login now. Basically, you don't need to enter your username, you don't have to enter your password. You, if you click that, it just automatically logs into your account. So, yes. You can use this, but I'd be careful because if you're using this, one, if you're going to, yeah, if you are going to use something like this, of course, you need to tell your, you need to tell your users that you are grabbing, you're creating a unique identifier. So yeah, that's one thing. But even if you don't tell them, right, but you should, then this still wouldn't work because if you were to clear your cookies, if you don't know what cookies are, by the way, um, it's I'm not talking about freshly baked cookies, but that does sound good right now. Uh, cookies are basically your browser. Sa it's saved information, basically. So here's the thing. Browsers are getting smarter <laughs> these days. And with that, it clears its cookies a lot. It cares, you know, privacy reasons. Your user ID will change. And basically, people will get mad saying, like, why can't I use this, that, that, and that. If, let's say, they go to school, right? And they want to use the school Wi-Fi. And they want to log into this, right? It's not going to grab that user ID. It's going to create a new user ID for each viewer, basically. Because schools, networking systems, they, they operate in a different way. So, of course, you can't do that. And plus, you can't create a user ID for them. It would automatically generate to one and it's done. You can't give them the same user ID from before. And even if you could, that's just going to be harder on you. Don't add user ID. Not that reliable. I heard that you can't, if you have your own code.org account and you did the get user ID, it creates one and it stays with you on your username. I'm not sure that about that. I don't think that would work, but you know, just wanted to say that. Okay, so security word. Why did I want you to add that? Basically, I got a comment on my one of my videos saying, how do I do a forget password? So security words, we can't do email and then it will send an email to your email, actual email, and then say, oh, you did a forget password. Let's reset your password. We don't have that way. So instead, I'm going to create a security word. That security word could be anything. You want to put the, that's one. You want to put your school, you want to put Microsoft, I don't know, like the word Microsoft, Starbucks, uh, Minecraft, I don't know. 
any security word doesn't matter and account type actually you know what we're going to put account type as free for now and stick with me on that let's change this to button 12 and it will create the record now it will oh i can see why okay so we're going to go ahead and do set text and uh, on status 2 we're going to we're just going to say incorrect oops, incorrect or not incorrect <laughs> account registered account registered we'll just do that Okay, we created the record. Cool. So what's next? We need to... Actually, yeah, I do know one more thing we can do. Um, basically, what if someone has the same username as the other person? So what we're going to do is on accounts, we'll just do an account then we're going to see if we can locate if there is a username exactly the same as this one so what I'm gonna do is on here I'm just gonna read the records on account and I'm gonna go ahead and put e actually wait we because it's not gonna be able to grab it uh, we need to just we need to give it some type of identifier so here time created let's get that let's grab it time created we will just do parentheses if it d doesn't detect anything on the time created basically just ignore we're going to space it all right no no need to add any code on here but if it does detect some type of word or even one letter on the time created then we're it's going to go to the next if so if the username matches text input 9 then basically and we can get out the the else one but if it does detect it or actually no we'll just grab that again on the else if it doesn't detect any username that matches with that then we're just going to it's just going to create the record as normal but if it does detect something, then we're going to put right here status 2. And then just say this username is already... Oh, this username exists. Try another username. Okay. Let's try this out. Register for an account. And... To get rid of some of these accounts okay so i want this out hello and i will we'll just do test as a password and say my name or we'll just say pi and account type is free mode no i don't care on that and i just realized we just experienced an issue on here account registered Ooh, that's not right. That's not right. What's going on here? Let's see. Line 101. Set property, camera, which does not exist. Oh. Oh, I just realized that. There we go. That's... Try that one more time. Line 2. Label 17 does not exist. Oh, that's the auto button. Oh, that's the one from the original registration page, is it? Okay. So clearly, there is some type of issue on here. But it's okay. Test. Test. Pro. I don't care.
That's interesting. We can fix it. Okay. So on the else, we're going to most likely it's like excluding it. It's able to figure out like okay something's going like something is going on from here. So we're going to Okay, I know what to do. I know what to do. So we're going to duplicate this, okay? But instead of getting the username, we're going to do get text. And on text input 9, if it says this message, then then it won't be it won't create it we're just going to clear it but if it does find it then it's still going to create the account so let's try that register for an account and ooh we got too much accounts on here hello test test uh, yeah yeah sure ooh it really is trying to register the account even though username does not exist Okay, when you, we can do something, let's first try to figure out how, why it's, it's constantly duplicating. So we're going to hide element button 12 because most likely it might be thinking that it's being clicked like a lot of times. And then we're going to show the element button 12. Uh, hold on. Time created. If the username does exist, this username exists, try another username. Or else if, and it's going to detect it again. And then we will do button, we'll show element button 12 again. Let's try that one more time. Register for an account. Hello, test, ting. T free. This is so interesting. Why are you recreating? And it's green three. Read the records, type created. There, there, there. What if we put in a function? Oop. Account register. So we will grab this as a function and do account register. And we'll put it here. I just want to see if it's, a if it's able to figure out like something's going on on here. So test, 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 free mode. Uh, oh wait, that's not the account. Hello. It's still able to. Okay, I know. Okay, there's another thing we can try. So we're going to put text right here. And then we'll give it a little, uh, tick number. So right here, we'll hide it because we don't really, um, this isn't really doesn't really have to show. And just remember that ID or whatever you named it. So if that exists, we're going to set the number right here. Tick number to one. And that basically is going to say if it, if the tick number is one, uh, the code can't continue. So, and 
We'll just add one right here also, just in case. Ooh, why did it do that? Why did it do that? But in 12, that should be right. Okay. So now, when it does that, we're going to do and I want and just because someone might want to create another account on here then we're going to do on the read records or on button 12 we're just going to do zero so if the number if the tick number equals one then we're gonna give it something random to do we're just gonna do we're just gonna do set you know what text input nine let's get let's grab that set text text under input nine we're just gonna clear it that, that's all we're going to do. But if it's able to figure out what it is, then if it if it's not if the tick number is not one, then it's just going to remove it. So cool, we got that all set up. Now, when we register for an account, and, okay, we got a ton of duplicates here. Hello, and, oh wait, I just realized I should get rid of that. Hi, test, and then free mode. There we go. It won't be able to figure it out. It clears the username. Perfect. So... So basically, what we're doing is we're setting a tick number on it. So that tick number is basically going to say, okay, if it detects number one, then then we it can't continue. It's done. And we gave it some type of thing to do so it won't, you know, change. But if it the tick number is zero, then basically it's just going to be able to create the record. So basically now we have a way to create a record. Now here's what another issue it's, that's going on. Oh, wait, it's because we never showed the element button 12. Okay, we'll just do that. So, let's try this. So, hello, test, test, and then free mode, register. It doesn't work. But what if I just want to do hello too? Now, why are you creating more? We'll figure that out, actually. Oh, someone asked something. <laughs> Please could suggest me some ideas for my app. Okay, well, there's really a ton of things you can create with your app, exactly. Um, what can you create? There's a ton of things, really. To create a chatting service, create a payment op- uh, not payment option. Uh, I just said something about that. Uh, no, no. Uh, I've seen a lot of apps where they create planners for school. I've seen apps where you can- it's like a help button. So, you can request for help on an assignment for school. I don't- um, something like that. Uh, or, maybe you want to create- a game where it's I just noticed I'm ma making educational guesses like one plus like I do like it will give you different math equations one plus one ten plus ten it's like a timer and then you can just do what's ten plus ten quick and then 20 50 40 something like that right you can create stores shops like a pre-order system what if you want to create what if you have a store in mind, right? And you can create an app for them so it will pre-order. 
in your daily life? Hmm. Which can help us in your daily life. Well. Planner apps, really. <laughs> That's really all I think of, actually. Wait a minute. Um, yeah, planner apps. You can also do photo import. Your phone can't hold that much photos, right? So, sorry. Um, yeah, your your phone can create doesn't hold that much photos. So why not use the code.org system and import your photos um, using the photo tab? Perfect, right? Uh, something like that, right? Um, quote of the day. Make a quote for yourself. Okay, that's that's another thing. There's really a ton of things you can do, and with Code.org, actually, you can actually make your app live so other people can see, gain more ideas on it. Go ahead and check that out. Um, but yeah, there's actually really a ton you can do with this. Of course, we're limited though because, um, actually, fun fact: I, we, I really want a feature where you can put this on the Play Store, App Store, something like that. And I've seen parents and uh, teachers, they want that feature so they can make it go live. But for some reason, or not for some reason, Code.org doesn't let you. And I, I guess that's understandable since this is an online thing. But And if you're using a data browser, of course, there needs to be constant internet. Um, but it would have been nice if there was one way. But uh, I was glad to help on that. But anyways, uh, let's let's go back. Uh, all right, we created that record. We showed the the element. Yeah. All right. So um, yes, we showed the element. Now we need to figure out why is it duplicating. We don't want tons of accounts saying this and that, and then it just gets really confusing. And what if you want to create delete your account? Basically, we have an issue. Okay, I've been there. I have to say, I've been there. Uh, there, there were times when I have when I was I wanted to make an app for a video, and for some reason, it's not able to. I I wasn't able to think of one. So, I hear you on that. <laughs> really do. Uh, but yeah. By the way, uh, not sure if people else got have it. There's something called coder's block. Not sure if people have that. It's basically like a reader or writer's block. Yeah. Basically, it's just you can't write that much code. You're probably a little sleepy. Just take a rest. Get off your computer. Read. Go outside. Do something like that. Um, because your mind's probably confuzzled with like, oh, this code, this code. Take a break. Always take a break, you know. But uh, yeah, but that's if you have like coders block where you like you can't write any code, you're stuck at this point. But anyways, so let's see what we can do here. We needed to create a record, but for some reason it's duplicating that. Okay, I think I know what we can do. On the create record, on the registration, we're going to immediately remove everything on here. So, actually, wait a minute. We have a function for that, do we? Clear registration. Wait. Oop, that's something else. Control C. And then we're going to go ahead to the account registration. And there we go. Clear registration. Let's try this. Hello to test. Uh, my security word is pumpkin, and I want free mode. Register. Wait a minute. Didn't we just? Hold on, I want to see that again. Hello to test. Test and. Okay, it's doing it again. All right, but I'm not giving up on this. 
Why is it doing that? Show element button 12, and then text input 9 will be cleared. I think it has something to do with the clear registration. Like, it doesn't want... Doesn't like it. Ooh, the ticker is gone, is it? The tick number. Are you gone? Tick number... And if the tick number equals 1... I'm just curious. I'm gonna show it, make it visible. Because I want... I'm really curious whether or not... Test 2... Oh wait, hello 2. Test, test, and then free mode. You still create... And it creates more! This is like a spamming system. The go back works, I can tell you that. Okay. Let's see here. If the tick number equals 1, it will set the text and do that. And then it would go straight to the account register function. And then, this username exists, show element button 12. Read the records on event button 12, tick number equals 1. If the tick number equals 1, then the set text, text input 9, it will clear it, show element button 12, and... I don't know whether this is a bug on code.org's end, or is there a bug on mine? Because this should work, but it immediately goes straight to the else, which I find very interesting. Okay, so we created the record on here, and yes, yes, yes. Okay. Wait. Okay. So what we're going to do is set another tick number. So registration, and I'm just going to get like tick number two. Tick number two. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to force it to not, to literally really not. So, here, tick number, we're going to set it at 1. So if the number equals 1, if the number equals, um, Oh wait, I have to rename that. So tick number 2, right? So if tick number 2 equals 1, it has to create that registration. But if it's not tick er, after the account registration is over, it will immediately and I just realized that that's a different one. It will have to go back to 0. But if it is not tick number one, then it will just go back to tick number zero. So I'm going to force it to not do it. So I know it's going to be, it's going, it's the forget, or the remember username. At, huh. Does it even change to a one? It does, but it still doesn't. There is. I do have one possibility. Which I'm willing to try. So, 
Bob admin monorail and uh, I want pro mode. Okay, I know it created three, but what if I want, if, what if I am Bob? It still does it, so it's not... Wait, the security word is not going through. By the way, this is exactly how I make my videos. Every time when you're programming, you will come up to a mistake. I'm going to tell you that right now. If you don't make mistakes, I'm going to be really proud. But yes. By the way, these are basically how I record videos. And then I have to edit all this out. That's why really you don't see this part. But this is a live stream, so, you know. But let's see here. Where's the account creation? I want to, I'm curious what's going on there. There's nothing on the security word. Registration, security word is text input 11. Okay, that fixes that. But what I don't understand is why aren't you changing? <laughs> Immediately, the tick number should be able to figure out that it should be a zero. Set number, tick number one. If the number is tick number one, otherwise, if, otherwise it, it will just change back to zero and do nothing. Run. Register for an account. Bob. Test. Test. Free. Okay, so now the thing works on the thing, but that still doesn't explain why there's got to be, like, so many accounts. Usually, there's something usually wrong with the code on here. Username, password. Is it the IDs? I need it. As soon as it creates that record, it needs to disappear. Like, it needs to stop creating more accounts. Page three. This is so interesting how it's able to do this. Because I haven't came across this one. Usually, this code should theoretically work. Unless there's something I missed, but I don't think I missed anything. I'm missing something, am I? Because I know the if one, well no, that should work. That's a for loop, that's a while loop, and that's an if loop. Wait a minute. I know what to do. Okay, and this is worth a shot. So if the tick number equals one, then yes, we're going to do that. But we're not going to use an else. We're not going to connect it anymore. Connect. We're not going to connect stuff. So if the tick number equals 1, then basically it won't work. And we're going to individually do that. And yeah, if tick number equals 2, actually, wait a minute. So if tick number equals one, because tick number, if it equals one, then basically it's saying that there's a duplication in the username. But um, uh, if tick number two, if something's going on with tick number two, that means, 
that's just basically the account creation system. You know what? We're going to get rid of tick number two for a little bit. So if tick number... If tick number equals zero, basically it's saying that there is no account. And the tick number of... Wow, I'm getting confused with my own code. All right, data, Bob, admin, test, free mode, still creates those three. And it's a one. Wait a minute. It's able to create it. But this if thing is here. And it's not connected, so technically this shouldn't work. If I put it inside, was it Bob? It's Bob. Bob test test. That works. Show element button twelve. Why aren't you? This username does not exist. Okay, you should still be able to show the element, because I want... Okay, this code's getting crazy, so let's clean this up, because I think it's working now. We go here, and then we just type in Bob, test, test, promo, this username exists, try another username. It won't create that username anymore. Oh... It disappeared. Okay, wait. We ooh. test register. Okay, cool, cool, cool. This helps. This does not help actually anymore. All right. Uh. Okay, well, I don't give up. Alright, so if the username equals text input 9, then it will set the text as to the, this username that exists, try another username. And it will set the number as tick number 1. Tick number 1 basically means that, the, that, that there's a duplication in the username. And it will show the element button 12. Because we hid the element. Because we don't want people spamming it. 0 is basically just telling it that the account, does. there's no duplication at all, it's clear. All right, cool. Now, if it if it is able to detect now, if there is no duplication on the username, okay, this is just unnecessary, actually. Now, ah, uh, I know what we can do. So, if tick number equals zero. If tick number equals zero, still, after all of that, then it will do the account registration. Otherwise, it will show... Oh, wait. Yeah, it will do that. Oh, set number, tick number one. Okay. So it will show element button 12. That's done. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. We're going to get rid of that, and we're just going to go straight to the account register. When it gets to the account register function... What we're going to do is that if it detects tick number one again, then it will set the text text input nine. Hold on. What's text input nine? Text input nine is that. It will clear the text input nine and it will show element button 12. But I'm fully confident that it's going to be able to do it by itself, so do that. This is just an extra verification, basically. Um, text input 9 will clear off. Cool. And...
this username exists. We're going to set a timeout on here just so it doesn't say it all the time. And then we'll just make it to 3000. Now, if tick number equals zero still, then it will create the record as normal. Set the number. We don't need this anymore, but it will show the element button 12. And it'll say account registered and then done. That should work because we're not associating it with anymore. We're creating a new line of code on that. So register for an account, Bob, test, test, free mode. This username exists, try another username. It won't work. But if I'm Bob2, you don't want to register. Why? Button 12, it'll hide the element, read records to see if there's any type of username. And if the username does match with something, then it will do that. Or else it's because there's it it it, it um it doesn't work right because it, there's nothing on the bottom. What I'm scared on this one though is if it were to Register for an account. Okay, Bob, here, here. And I can't believe we worked on this for like 30 minutes on it. This account exists. Bob, too. You still don't work. This is so interesting. Huh. I haven't come across this. Bob, too. If tick number equals zero, then it has to go straight to the account register. If and the, and the account register, if tick number equals one, then it won't work. And this could either make or break my code, but I'm willing to give it a shot. You know what, since I since I never made it required fields, technically I can just do this. Okay, so now it's doing it. The things I'm doing on here. Tick number zero. I just realized something. If the tick number equals one, basically it won't be able to access zero. So there's got to be two tick numbers. This will work. Okay. So basically, tick number two will be the special one. So tick number two, if it equals one, or if it doesn't have a duplication on the username, and it has to work on this one, I hope. Um, basically, if there's no duplication on the username, then basically tick number two will equal one. Tick number is basically just letting it know, okay, uh, the code is, or it's basically just saying there's duplication in the username, but tick number two is basically just saying, okay, you can register now. So now I can basically tell it to do this, and then I can set the tick number back to zero just to avoid any, because it doesn't reset it. Tick number two to zero, yes. But actually, we can actually put it here because it would work, but let's put it in the bottom. My gosh, and there's still a ton of other features I want to go over. It's, all right, test. Oh, wait, this is login. Bob.
It won't work. Cool. Bob 2. Tick number changed. I like that. But tick number 0 is still there, so it still won't be able to access it. Okay. So what we're going to do is set the tick number to 0 or to 1. Let's try it. Set tick number to 1. Okay, cool. Bob, even though that tick number is set, it still won't be able to access it. Wait, why are you 1? Because now technically it, it, it would be able to now. I really want to get this set up. Okay, so Bob clearly doesn't work because the tick number is 1. So for some reason, it's able to penetrate the else. I really want to say that's a bug, but it's I don't think that is. Alright, so basically what we're going to do... Trying to think of something that would fix it. I did something like this and it worked. But I'm trying to remember. Okay, tick number two, tick number one, one. It's basically able to register for the account, but it's not able to. Tick number 2 equals 1, tick number equals 1, so basically, it's this, we need to move this somewhere. So basically, if the username does equal text input 9, and it's able to do that stuff, basically, it's gonna give it tick number 1. Wait, tick number 0, if tick number equals 0... Ooh, are you not letting me anymore? Oh. You're not letting me. Okay. Hold on, everybody. Don't worry, that um, black screen is normal. That black screen is normal. Just need to refresh. Okay, we're back. Anyways. Uh, let's see here. I think I just realized what's going on. Okay. Basically, tick number zero, it needs to tick number zero, basically. So we need it to have that number. But for some reason, it's changing to one. And that's because of this. Tick number one. So, if it was, let's say, a new user, Bob1, right? For some reason, it sets it to 1. So, it won't be able to access this tick number, because that's the security, um, our security code that we've added. So, what it's going to do...
What if I put it here? <laughs> Just out of curiosity. If I were to do that on Bob 2, you still wouldn't be able to, would you? Oh, it's because of these, is it? That should work. Okay, tick number two is zero. Oh, let's do that. Bob two account registered because there shouldn't be there. Yeah, there shouldn't be. But if let's say I want to register an account again, it still does it. But that's because the tick number one is set up, but tick number zero is not. So now. So if tick number equals one, then it will go straight to the, oh wait, if tick number equals zero, then what we're going to do is set the number for tick number two as one. That way it'll be, oh wait, am I right? Yeah, no, no, no. tick number two, no wait, yeah, it'll be one. And then right here, it'll be one also. And then we're set number. And then set number on here will be tick number two as zero. Actually, we don't need that on zero because it's already here. Uh, tick number two equals one. That's because there's no Bob 1, which I'm not worried on. But if we do Bob 2, that worries me because then it duplicates that account. And then tick number, the tick number should go from here to here. Dang, I can't believe we, I can't believe I spent an hour on this. Okay. So basically, we're at a point where it's stuck. So this is what I'm going to do. Let's clear this gone. Now, we have a new canvas, basically. So on registration, button 12. So when you do button 12, there's two tick numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put zeros in already. So it's already pre-done. So if actually, wait a minute, here, right here on the read records, if the read records on the accounts page, So, if the text on text input 9 e matches or equals to the username of the account, basically, 
the number for tick number one or tick number will be zero. Or I mean will be one. Let's do that. If tick number equals one, we're gonna we're gonna remove it from there. So now if tick number equals one, then basically it will set the text on text input nine to nothing. And then on the status, it will just say incorrect username or not incorrect username. Um, username exists. Try another username. All right. And then we're going to set a timeout on here just so it clears the just so it clears it. Okay, so that's done. So that's basically the how this will work. But if tick number but now we need to figure out how we can get the account registration to work. And for that, I'm going to put this right here, by the way. Um, oh, we should probably hide button 12 because we don't want it to duplicate. So yeah, if tick number two, username exists, try again. Actually, I'm gonna put it on the timeout so it will just after three um after three thousand then it's gonna show the element button twelve. So now we need to tell it whether we need to tell it to go straight to the account register. So if the tick number equals one, yes, that's perfect. But now I'm gonna create another one. I'm not gonna use the else because clearly that doesn't work. So if tick number equals zero then I want it to go straight to account register. There we go. Yeah. Now we're, I'm leaving tick number two because I want to see if we're we can get away with it. Bob one, okay. But what if I want to create another Bob one and then test? Username exists. Try another username. That works. Bob. Username exists. Try another username. Okay, cool. Test. That worries me. Oh, I think it's because we ready because tick number equals one. Wait, are you meaning is it meaning to tell me that all I needed to do is just clear the code? Count registered, and now it's not duplicating anymore. Bob, username exists. Username exists. Testing. There you go. That works. Go back works. Perfect. Okay. If you want to, if you don't want to go through the mis same mistake of spending an hour, I highly recommend you just. Go to the description, get the link, um, go check out this, go check out this app, grab it if you want the user, if you don't want a username duplication system. Because clearly this took me an hour. Maybe for you, you probably were just watching me and you already knew what to do. I don't know. But yeah. Okay. So now we need to require that every, when you click registration, Like we need everything to go perfectly on this area. So basically when it shows the element and then, you know, stuff like that, but uh, actually on the account register, 
I'm gonna grab an if else. Don't worry, this isn't gonna be part of the that uh, spam system. But if text input ten equals nothing, then basically, and I'm just gonna grab this. Then basically, it's going to. We're gonna set text on status to saying, uh, you forgot. You forgot to enter something. Check, check the field. Check the field. Um, check the boxes. Or not check boxes because, yeah, review the boxes again. There we go. All right. And we'll set a timeout. Three thousand. And I'm going to grab the show element 12 and put it right here in the box. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to create multiples of these. Okay, so text input 10 is clearly required. Text input 11 is also required. Now drop down one. Now, if drop down one equals the, and then we're going to type it account type, then it needs to fix that. The, uh, the person needs to fix that. That needs to all be there. And if it doesn't detect anything on here, then basically it will just do the account registration. And I just realized I forgot one more thing. And this is the most important one, actually. Text, oop, not that. There we go. And then text input nine. Yay, we got it. So now if I registered for an account and I was a Bob one, just for example, it wouldn't be working on that, but even if I do like SpongeBob, something like that, you forgot to enter. I saw it. Forgot to do something to to free mode. Account registered. Oh, it's dropped down one. So basically, Jack two T T free mode. That will work. And then it doesn't duplicate. Cool. But if I wanted to do it again, username exists, and if I forgot some, if I forgot a something, it will say you forgot to enter something. Review the boxes again. Perfect. That works perfectly. I am proud of that. So we'll get a, a rid of tick number two. Account registration. That and that. And when they click go back, it'll, you know, it'll do that. So now we're back at the menu screen. So now let's go ahead and do forget password. Yeah, I'll put it here. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 not yet. We'll do forget password later. Actually, we have to do uh, what to do with the account type. Okay, I know what to do on here. Alright, so basically what we're going to do on here is 
we are gonna grab that text. So what does that text say? Pro mode, right? Pro mode. And we're gonna grab the text from drop down one. So if drop down one equals pro mode, then we're gonna set the screen to something else. I'm gonna duplicate this and just make tick number two, just so it's easier for me to understand which one is which. But right now we can hide this, but for now we'll, we'll keep this. So tick number two is zero. So right now we're gonna duplicate this. Oop, not that. We're gonna duplicate it and it will, right here, we're gonna get rid of these by the way. Right here are, it will say account and yeah, account registration, promo, the promo registration. Promo registration. So now, so now we need to do welcome to the Air Family Professional Service. So now with the prof uh, so now with the Air Family Professional Service, okay, now you're going to be a type writer. So basically, typewriters basically try to do like a sales pitch. I'm not saying, um, oh no, sorry, not typewriter. Uh, my gosh, copywriter. <sighs> yeah, copywriter. Um, here, let me bring out what a copywriter is. Don't worry, you'll see a black screen. Don't worry about that. Uh, okay. So, uh, fun fact, this is actually a really good career <laughs> to pick. So, being a copywriter, basically, is just trying to be a sale, uh, your sales pitch. So, let's say a client comes to you and says, like, hey, I need you to write, I need you to say something about uh, school, Okay. Uh, a school comes up to you, they said, oh, okay, here's a school. Uh, Trying to think. Example school, right? So they want you to pay. Or not pay. They're, they're going to pay you and you need to add, you need to give it, you need to give it some type of uh, writing, right? So like, instead of saying, oh, example school is a good school. You're going to say example school is a school or is an education service that is able to provide quality standards with proper with proper grades grading systems it is able to teach students the fundamentals on on the common core state standards and the requirements for the state of their choosing or or, or for the current state residing in so right now, yes, that's a copywriter, basically. Copywriters are really good, actually. Um, uh, uh, for me, I don't think I'm that good, but, you know, yeah. Uh, basically, though, if you're going to pursue something like HTML and CSS, you would like to have, like, some type of basis of copywriting. Copyright is not... There's a difference. Copyright and copyright. It's C-O-P-Y-W-R-I-T-I-N-G. So basically, yeah. So something to take a look at. Okay. So now that we're back, let's go ahead and yeah, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. And then there's only going to be one text box, really. I said, please enter your account or please enter your access code for account 
to gain access to Pro Mode. There we go. And the placeholder will be it's a good currency system that we can name. Um no not pro coin. No, we're not doing that. Uh air air coin. Like Bitcoin, but you know. Air coin access code. You can gain, you can gain an access code from an air, from an air sales, from an air message, messaging, messaging sales agent. There you go. You can gain access from there. And then right here, redeem. Cool. We did it. So now, and we'll just do a redemption, uh, promo, promo, verify. Um, gain, gain extra services and perks with promo by air, by air messaging. So basically, they have the option on going back um, from uh, at the pro mode verify. So we're going to go ahead and do pro mode verify. And then on event, button 5, we'll just set the screen back to registration. And we're going to add one more. And um, we're going to get the number from... Let's just go back to the, uh, this one and go to tick number two. And tick number two is basically going to say... If it equals zero still, basically it's, it's going to give an error message on status two. It's, it's going to say, please change your account type. Or finish setup in pro for pro mode for pro mode. So it won't be able to it won't be able to change the it won't be able to give you pro mode unless you've been unless you set it up. And instead of free, we're just gonna grab the text from drop down one. Okay. Yeah, so it ha you need pro like pro mode, pro mode. Uh, really, maybe pro mode's not worth it. <laughs> pro mode verify. And then we'll just do right here. Pro mode is only $50.99. dollars for one account USD. Now to be honest, fifty nine nine is very expensive. It's not even worth it. And I'm the creator of air messaging, so clearly it's not worth it. But for just for the sake of this app, we're just gonna say this. So on here, we're gonna get rid of all this. Uh, or don't delete it. Don't delete accounts, by the way. But we're gonna do air code, air air coin, and it will right here will be access code and status. So basically, there's your code, and it's gonna say valid. Oh, 
I don't know why. I wish that it could just automatically put parentheses. Alright. Anyways, we got that. Okay. So, let's see. Pro mode verify. It'll go back to registration. Okay, so on button 3, when you do button 3, oh, label 14 needs a status. 1, 2, 3. Alright, 3, status 3. So on status 3, so if, so basically, um, it will read records from Aircoin. <laughs> Where we? Aircoin. And if if the access po uh, code, yeah, if the access code equals the number of text input seven, And we need an else, by the way. So we we would put right here on status of three. Um, no access code. No access code uh, can be found. Contact contact an air sales agent for more information or for more info. Okay, and then we'll set a timeout on that. There, there, 3,000, done. Cool. Okay, so if it's able to gain access to your air coin, then we need to make sure it's valid. So on the status, if the status equals valid, right yeah it would val be valid or else it will say this access code may have been used or is not valid anymore please please try again by the way we need to clear these there we go okay so yeah it lets you know whether it's valid or not which we want it to do. Okay. So now, uh, let's see. Okay, yeah. So what we're going to do is get the ID number. So I'm going to go here and then put another one right here. And then this will be a Aircoin ID. We're going to hide it. We don't really need to show. Um, and we're going to set the number. We're going to set a number called Aircoin ID. And we're going to get the ID from it. Now, when it does that, then what we're then what it's going to do is it's going to update the record. So it'll update the record. It'll get the number of the air coin. So the air coin ID. Then what it will do. Um, let's do a placeholder place and then there basically okay so what it's going to do is on the access code we still want it we still want to have the access code with us so it'll do text underscore input seven and the the status would basically say used or not valid. We'll just do that. And uh, as soon and then when it does that, 
then what we're going to do is set the number on text input 7. Oh, not number, text. Text input 7 to nothing. Then, just for security purposes, aircoin ID will do nothing. And it will set the screen back to registration. And then on registration, because we because it validated it, then we're going to set the number for that to one. So take number two, right? Two one. Cool. We got it. So now on the clear registration, because we 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 need this in mind. Uh, we're going to set the number on tick number to zero and tick number two to zero also. Tick number two to zero. And on the registration, I'm going to hope that it tick number seven, our coin ID, and then one and registration. Set the screen to pro mode verify. Actually, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, because maybe that person wants to not use it. So if the number of if the number of tick number two equals one equals one, he won't do anything. Oh wait, if the tick number equals zero, sorry. Then it will set the screen to promo mode verify. Otherwise, technically, it's not going to do anything. Okay. And just because, I'm going to put right here. Because I want to. <laughs> Powered by Aircoin, Aircoin by KTech app development. Got a credit. There we go. Powered by Aircoin. Cool. Okay. So let's say I want to, okay, what's a password? Uh, test pass, okay. My security word will be pineapple and my account type will be pro mode. I'll register, but I don't want to enter that. And, oh, that is funny. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Show element, show element, we gotta add that button to all. Okay, let's do this one more time. Register for an account, and let's just make sure that it didn't, okay, good. Cool, cool, cool. So, nerdy person 13, test pass. My security word will be pineapple, and I will do, and there's, I can do free mode or pro mode register but i have to register for an account but i don't want to so i'll just click go back and then register or well technically it still won't let me you know i just realized even if i chose free mode it's not going to let me because this isn't right So what I'm going to do is just get rid of that and then put this back. Okay, let's do this one more time. So nerdy person 13, my password will be test pass pineapple and promo register, but I still can't because it won't let me. So I'm going to... Well, what if I want to guess for an access code? Well, there we go. Redeem. 
No access code be, can be found. Contact an air sales agent for more information. But what if there is already like like that, and it's like not, not valid? It's, oh. Then, this access code may have been used or is not valid anymore. Please try again. Okay, but I still have one. So one zero. Redeem. Wow, I have pro mode right now, and if I want to go free mode and then pro mode, I can still have pro mode. Yay, I have pro mode now, which is nice. So I can register. That worries me. Is it giving me an error? What's going on here? I thought everything works. Count type. Show element button. What? Well, oh, it's still valid. Wait, hold on, hold on. Pineapple pro mode, and then redeem, register. Why aren't you registering? Let's see the code. If tick number two equals zero, it won't work. But... Yeah. Zero. And then, right here, it gives it tick number two equals one. Tick number two is zero, and then tick number two is one. Then that should work. What if I want free mode? Free mode works. And the username exists now. Dang. I got scammed. Alright. Drop down one, basically, pro mode. And then would have to verify that. What I don't understand is why is it not else if pro mode, then if pro mode, and then tick number two, zero, then it would set the screen there and show element button 12. But that would only do it. If pro mode zero, or we can force it to tell to create to create you. So we can try that out. Is my just kind of curious? My ear point. It's still valid, huh? That worries me because technically it should be not validating it anymore because we're forcing it to in invalidate itself. Oh, it's because we never. We never made it. So wait, has it been creating something? Oh, it hasn't. Oh, okay. Okay, let's let's re restart that. Nerd person. Well, that account's already created, so I'll just delete it. Okay, test pass, pineapple, and pro mode. Zero. Okay. Cool, I got pro mode, so I'm just going to redeem that. And then it sets it up. Cool. Now it changes to not valid because we don't want it to... We don't want to duplicate codes, basically. So free mode and pro mode, I can switch between different account types now. And if I click register, the account registers itself. So now I have pro mode, basically. And I can't create another username. Now, test... Ooh, that's a problem. That is a big problem. That's a big problem. So when it registers, set number to tick number two to one. Okay, that's a problem. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll set the number on tick number two to zero again. So we're replace. We're moving it back to zero. 
and this one doesn't need to because this already has tick number. So go here, register for an account, Aircoin, and 25. That's the new code. Or we'll say free reward. And it will say valid. Free reward, because, you know, people like rewards. So test, 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 pro mode, register. Oh, that's already an account, really? California. And free reward. What? No access code can be found. Contact the sales agent. Let me guess, it wants numbers only, does it? I'm just gonna guess that. So if I were to try it, because technically... Oh, wait, yeah, it, well, it just wants numbers. Okay. So, yes, we want pro mode. And, uh... Account registered. And I can't register anymore. And it creates an account, California. Cool. So now pro mode is set up. Dang, pro mode is cool. So now, what if I'm that guy and I'll just do re something like that and then register? It won't work anymore because you need, you need, um, okay, I'm sorry, but like, there's like, huh. Eastern Standard Time, India, Pacific Standard Time, or that's me, India Stat Standard Time, huh. I have to say, I'm very, I, I, I'm really proud that people are going along with the app. Huh, that's really nice. Anyways, um... And I'm really surprised that a lot of people from different countries, unless you're using a VPN, you know, trick me. But yeah, that's pretty nice. Anyways. Because I'm guessing you, I'm guessing people can't access this data browser. So I'm just going to give you guys a code. So one, two, three, four, five. I don't care whether you guys use this. Use code one two three four five for twenty five percent off your next purchase. Something like that. Yeah, there's one two three four five. Go ahead and use it. If you can't access the data browser, then yeah, go ahead and use it. Doesn't matter. But anyways, yes. So that works. Okay. So we set up a professional account service, a registration where there's going to be a paid service and so on and so on. Cool. We got that all set up. But now, what if you forgot your password? That sucks then, right? Well, we can actually add a forget password section. I'm just curious, if anyone did, did anyone use the, no one used the air coin yet. If you want pro mode, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, there's only one. What can you get with pro mode? Really nothing, but, I mean, it's pro mode. <laughs> That's pro mode for you. Anyways. Basically, what we're going to do now is we're going to set up a forget password section. Oh, I shouldn't have done that, but it's okay. Forgot password. So... Forget password. So of course we're unfortunately we're not gonna do a forgot your username because come on, that's not really that's not really how it works on this. And we'll make it red. Okay. So now if we go to the registration page.
yeah. So if we go to the registration page, um, we're gonna duplicate this, and then we'll do account rec the account recovery utility. It said. It said, did you forget your password? <laughs> Let's recover your password and get your account back started again. All right. So now, right here, we'll ju we'll just put uh, your user. You'll just put your username, and then your remember that security code that we did. There we go. That security code. Remember that or security word. Well, that's why. We're going to need that because we can't actually enter the email, right? Case sensitive. Remember, username is also case sensitive, but I'm just not going to do it. And right here, this is a verification step. Um, are you re are you really you? What account type were you? Are you really you? What account type are you? And then submit. All right. So, someone used one, two, three, four, five. That's cool. Anyways, <laughs> oh my gosh, oh my gosh. All right. Uh, anyways, so yes, you're gonna do the forget password utility. Username, security word, account type, and this is the forgot pass. Now, if you are able to completely um, or successfully do it, then it's gonna say. Great, we great. We know great. We know it is you now. Great, we know it is you now. Let's change your password and get you back on. So right here, we're gonna use the update records tab, but we don't want it to we but it, we need an identification number basically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a text right here, and we're gonna get rid of this, and I'm gonna grab a text input. And then pass uh, your new password center. And you can't really go back anymore because, you know, come on. Um, security pass. Wait, what? Forgot pass. Two. And then it will recover from there. All right. So now let's get the forgot passwords um, stuff ready so so that's the uh, that's something else so right here we'll do forgot pass part one and two okay so now what we're going to do is go straight to the menu screen again remember the menu screen code and then we're going to go ahead and do the forgot password. And we're going to set the screen straight to the forgot pass. So let's go all the way back up. And 
and remember button 11. Then we're going to set the screen back to menu screen. But then we need to set up, we're going to set up a function just so, so it's the pass, so pass box, the pass box, oh wait, erase pass box. And then we're going to put it right here, erase pass box. And right, what, what it's going to do here is we're going to set the text, text underscore input 8 to nothing. And then 1, 2, 3, text input 13. Of course, we're going to do nothing. And then drop down 3 to account type. Okay. Yeah, we'll 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 put label thirty-three. Oh wait. Status four. And we'll just clear that. And forgot pass two then what we're going to do on the erase pass box is also because this will be used for two of these pages so id2 and text input 17 okay so forgot pass so we got that that okay so now we're going to do on event and then do button 7 and we're going to update the record. Oh wait, not update record, sorry. Read record. And that goes to accounts. And this is basically just verifying that it's you. So if the text on text input 8 verifies with your username, Yeah, it verifies with your username, then it will work. Otherwise, it will set a text on status 4 saying, uh, cannot locate, cannot locate your account or security pass or security word. And we'll set a timeout on here to like 3000, something like that. And yeah, okay, so we can take that out. So we got that. Then on here, text input 13. Now text input 13 is going to be security word. By the way, if I am, uh, if you have any questions, let me know because I did say a lot in like the past, like probably the past like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. But anyways, uh, yeah. Anyways, yes, text input 13 and then do the security word. Okay. And then it would do to cannot locate your account. Okay, yes. So now, what's next? What is next? Oh, the account type. So, Basically, on here, the account type, it's just for verification, of course. Uh, this is drop down three. Drop down three. Now, if it is able to verify all of this, then what we're going to do is set text on, not text, set number. On ID two to the I the, the proper ID, and we're gonna set the screen straight to forgot pass two. Oh, just ignore this read records. By the way, we're not gonna use that. Um, actually, I can just get rid of it. 
So here now is the hard part. We need to input all of this again. So username, password, time created, and sorry, I'm writing it down just so it's it's a good idea to have pen and paper. And account type. Okay. Okay, so Let's do this. We're going to get the number from ID2. And we're going to grab some stuff. There are one, two, three, four, five. There are five things you need to do uh, to, to re-input. Now, why do we have to re-input all of these? It's because it replaces every single thing if there's nothing in it. So it will just blink out, black out those words. So it will black out the password if you don't re-enter the password onto the system. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. So you don't want to black out any information. So we need to have some type of system on that. And that's this, this, it's this system, basically. So what we're going to do is on username. Oh, wait. Yeah. On username. So username, password, time created, security word. Count type. Okay. Cool. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and remember these. We're not clearing these yet. So pa username is text input eight because we've already verified it. So there can't um, the system already knows that it's correct. So security word would be. Text input 13. The account type, what's the account type? Drop down three. The password would be on the forgot pass two, though that's text input 17, because that's the new one. And now we need to create one more. It's the time created. We want to use the same time created because, you know, we want to know when the account was created. So time created. So now we would get text and then get time created. And then there you go. And we should add that onto the, onto here. Time created. Cool. Okay, time created, done, perfect. So now what we're going to do is, as soon as it updates the record, then we are going to put the function on here that says erase pass box. Now you're probably wondering like, wait, what? it's going to erase everything and it's still updating. Well, actually, as soon, it, this has to finish the update record. If you put it inside, it has to finish it, and then it will go to erase pass box. Yeah. So now, that's when you click submit, by the way. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Oops. My bad. Button 15. Update record. There we go. We got that all set up. Erase pass box. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Erase pass box. Um. So when it do that, does that, it has to go back to the menu screen. And we're gonna put on status one.
sorry. Okay. Trying to figure out what else do we need to do. Um, oh, sorry, I blinked out for a bit. Um, <laughs> I think I'm about to have coders block on it. Uh, anyways, so code or not code? My gosh! All right. Um, resetted password successfully. And we'll set the timeout on 3000 and clear that immediately. And basically that is it. On forgot pass. You know what? No. Yeah, that should be it really. Okay, so let's try it out. So let's say my name is, yeah, nerdy person 13. So I forgot my password. Okay. And I'm just like, oh no, I don't know my password. I, oh shoot. And I have pro mode and I don't even know what pro mode is. And I bought it for $15.99. Anyways, I don't know pro, I don't know it. So I'm just gonna, I still remember my security though, word, it's pineapple. So what if I did free mode? Cannot locate your account. That sucks. But if I do pro mode, oh, I just got verified. That is awesome. I got verified. So now I could change it to uh, YouTube. Resetted password successfully. And there we go. And I just realized it deleted the time code. So, or the time created. So here's the thing, did it, is it because there was nothing on the time created or, let's see. There's nothing on the time created. That is fun. Forgot password. What is the word time created, but it's capital C in the middle. And time created. Okay, so, oh, I, I know why. I'm gonna drag you right here. Set text, not sex, uh, not set number. Uh, and set text will be the forgot pass. Oh wait, not forgot pass, uh, forgot pass two. Time created, all lowercase. Okay, let's do this again. Oh no, I forgot my password. Oh no, that sucks. But I do know my security word. Count type, I'm pro mode because I have no idea what that is. And then I would just do testing, submit, reset the password successfully. So if I go here to the accounts, I should see nerdy person 13 and testing and okay is it me or is it just not getting it oh it's because there's nothing on here so I'm just gonna give it you know what? I'll just delete this um, all right let's do this again Jack security word is two and you were free mode, but you don't have the exact text, so I'm just going to copy that. Sorry if your name is Jack, because you can't create an account. <laughs> and we'll do test. There we go, and it saves exactly the same information like before. Now we should probably also put on the forget password uh, right here on the middle, that you cannot reset your security your security word. 
please keep your security word in please keep your security in a safe place okay and that is pretty much it um that's all we're going to go over because we're about to reach a 3 hour mark and stuff and yeah, but um, I thought we could probably go over any questions. So if you have any questions, let me know. It doesn't have to be app on this, um, on 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 this app. It could be anything else. But while people are thinking, because maybe people are typing, I have no idea. Uh, and because I will probably forget. Hold on. Don't worry, there should be a block screen. Okay. Anyways. Uh, yeah, after that block screen, it should change. Anyways, I want to thank everyone. <laughs> so, right now, the popular series in this channel is the Code.org app tutorials. That's why I wanted to create this video, because I found out that we didn't finish it. Don't worry, this, is, this isn't going to end. I'm, I'm going to make another live stream on this probably sometime later on this week. I don't know, maybe Sunday. I don't know. But um I wanna thank everyone for watching. There I don't ask you guys to subscribe, I don't ask you to like, dislike. Um really the I probably think the only thing I ask is to comment. Um I wanna thank everyone that has helped a subscribe. You really didn't have to. I don't uh, I just wanna get straight to the point on programming that is it it's done basically that's what i want to do but i really want to thank everyone that has subscribed and want to continue watching and learning about programming education or really any of the other videos i made like um uh, like that investigative report about krpost.com i want to thank everyone though for watching um maybe we'll get to 400 i don't know uh yeah but i am hopeful that uh yeah and I, yeah, it, it, I never expected to got to, uh, get to 393. I remember when uh, I got to 100, I thought like, okay, that's it. That's all. We're, it's fine. Never gonna go back up. But it did to 300. I don't know how it did, but dang, that is so, that was, that is so cool. Never expected it to get all the way up to here. Um, but anyways, yeah. I really do appreciate everyone for, you know, watching. And, um, yeah. So I'll be, and just one more. I will be answering comments because I, this live stream will go straight back to the video. This this live stream will go straight back to, to like a regular video. So people, other people will be able to see it. Um, but, oh, you should be able to see a black screen, by the way. Uh, don't worry about that. But, if you, I'm gonna start answering comments from the my the channel. If you, but basically programming's done, class is over, um, so you can leave if you'd like. But if you want to st stay here for comments, stay because we're about to answer some. So I'm just gonna read it because I don't want to expose people's names. But since it's public, most likely you can see it. So these are probably going to be questions I didn't answer. Um, let's see here. Because I want to go all the way back to the bottom. I really do appreciate you that um, everyone making comments. Really do appreciate it. There's a lot. Of, uh, you really didn't have to. Okay. So for the... Hmm. You know what? Because these comments are public. These comments are public anyways, right? Yeah. Actually, you know, you know what? I will show the comments, but I want to show the video on where it is. So I'm going to capture my regular display. 
channel comments. Okay. So, let's see. Oh, wait. You know what I should just do? Sorry, I haven't prepared for this. This is the first time I'm doing something like this. Um, okay. So right now, I think this is my popular video. Oh, no, it isn't. There's 12,000. Yeah, I, I never expected to get this much views. And that much dislikes. Wow. Alright, anyways. um, Let's see here. And I do appreciate the comments that are saying, like, super helpful, you are really good, and stuff like that. Uh, I do thank everyone. So, basically, um, can we, and I did answer some of them, but I'm just going to repeat it. Can we design it a different way? Uh, voice crack. Can we design it in a different way? Yes, you can. Code, um, code.org allows you a way to remix the application. You can remix it as much, uh, you can remix it and then create your own version of it. So, yeah, yes, you can design it a different way. Buttons are not draggable. So actually, this actually just happened to be right now during the live stream. All you have to do is if the buttons are not draggable or, or you can't uh, type anything, like it just keeps, like you can type on the text box, but then it just, you have to type it, click uh, on it again. Then yes, you're going to have to re uh, refresh your browser. Do not remix it again. Do not duplicate, do not do another, do not click remix or else it's going to, you're going to create a new app. Just reload your page and then that's it. You'll go back to where you are. Can you make a small complete video on this? I wish I could, but that would take hours. And small is hard. There's too much, there's too much things that we need to talk about on it. Um, it is not good. It is the best. I do appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, he says uh, a lot. I do. Because these are unscripted. There's a reason why I make it unscripted. It's because I, I can think I can think of it and then we can try. And then if I make a mistake, at least you'll know that mistake. And you'll not do that mistake. Learn from my mistake. You know, stuff like that. Um... This is like the first three hour video I think I've made or three hour live stream. Huh. All right. Um, you did this for my AP English, uh, AP computer science class. Actually, fun fact. Um, I haven't took AP computer science yet. I'm going to take it next year, but it's really cool that, you know, this is all self learn. I was, I, I, I self taught myself on this. I had no idea how to use app lab at all when I first signed up, but then, uh, I, I just tried practicing and experimenting, and I, I eventually learned JavaScript. I am taking AP Computer Science actually next year, so you know, cool. Uh, yes, I didn't know what inverted commas or quotes were. How can the user upload some pictures or files in the app? I'm actually curious whether people said you can go choose in our app. Oh, how can the user? Okay. Well, this was seven months ago. I'm not gonna reply, but uh, we just showed. I just showed you right now. This was seven months ago. The, this update wasn't the update for that for the upload is wasn't added there. So yeah, if your Windows or any other operating uh, can't scroll with two fingers, so um, yeah, Chromebook doesn't have a scrolling unless you have a mouse. Use two fingers basically. I could not make a data table. Basically, and I did make that reply, you can manually create one by clicking the add button or you can do the create records tag. Yes, you can on that. Ten thousand views, wow. Hundred two likes, wow. Okay. Um 
I do appreciate that, thank you. Yep, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Semicolon. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> but still, text coding is a little difficult. Yes, okay, so text coding is difficult, I have to say. Um, if you're starting to learn JavaScript, code.org is a great resource. But if you want to go to, if you are ready, if you already know block coding, then yes, go try out text coding. But you're going to have to remember code. So, uh, you're gonna have to, yeah, you're gonna have to remember that code. But also remember this. Even if you're a computer programmer, you can still use Google. If you, the movies really perceive programming like, oh, you know everything, you know every single code. No, you're gonna still use Google. You really are. Yeah. So... Yeah, every programmer uses Google. You, they use um, what's it, Stack Exchange? I think that's what it's called. I forgot. Yeah, uh, some use Reddit. Some use W three Schools. That that one's for HTML, by the way. But yeah, w programming is it's a hard it's hard, but there is a big community out there. Hey, you missed some steps. Can you make another video? That's the live stream. Why don't you make a video of publishing an app to Play Store? I actually just talked about it right now. Basically, you can, but the issue being is that there is there there's really no way because Code.org doesn't let you. You can export your app. I can tell you that. Like for example, uh, you can click Share, and then right here you can click Show Advanced Options. And then you can do export for web. So you can export that and then it will contain the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. Um, yes, you can do that. But when I tried it, uh, I didn't really have some good times with it. For some reason, for me, it's not working. It might work for you. So give that a try. How do you update the data? Basically, update records, read record, create record. There's basically a bunch of ways. And I do explain it on here. Or not read records, create and update records. I couldn't do it. Try again. That's all I'm going to say. Just try again. Um, yeah. Actually, another thing I would say on this. Because um, if you couldn't do it, I wasn't able to fix the duplication on the username. And it took me an hour. But I was able to fix that. Uh, you didn't make a video on the login. I did. Uh, and I even linked that video. Um, cool. What is this? I'm in a lot of code.org app labs. <laughs> um, part 2. 4.9 views. What do people say here? Right now, if I try to register people, it's using the same username twice. I want to make it where I want to make it so that in the data there can be only one of each username. Okay, basically there might be a duplication in your username. Um, so the same issue happened to me actually. Uh, <laughs> so. Basically, this is what I will tell the people that are having this same issue. Remember the if else, this one? Don't use it. Don't use it on the this duplication username. I don't know whether it is my code or if it's code.org because theoretically, this should work. Theoretically, I might be wrong. There might be someone in the JavaScript community that's watching my video and is probably going to say like, oh, you're wrong, Carlo. I probably am, but... Theoretically, this should still work. I'm saying this theoretically because I'm not confidently sure that this would work. But in a perfect world, and theoretically, yes, it should work. So I don't understand why, but that's what I will tell you. I will recommend that you rewatch this video, though, or the live stream. When I create this, um, this one, we can't figure out what record it is. Can you tell me how to fix it? 
you did not name it right. Uh, rename it. It's case sensitive. Remember that. Very case sensitive. So make sure that you review that. After the login part, uh, when I entered the correct, it said it does not show the welcome to chat page. Well, if it's not giving you an error, make sure you do set screen. I believe I said this. Yeah, set screen, your page. I reloaded, then it was okay. Yep, that works. Be careful on this. Remix, do not keep clicking remix. Well, uh, just refresh it. Can you help by creating a chat system? It's a series. <laughs> uh, I, I don't have to create record code. Yeah, you, you, you're going to have to try restarting your browser. Um, if it still doesn't work, click show text and just type in uh, create record, basically. But um, really, you should be able to reboot it. Provide project links. Hey, um, I'll explain that later. Hey, you didn't show how to make a register. Um, watch the series. You didn't show the part you have done before this video. You didn't show the part. Huh. I don't, I don't understand it, but <laughs> I wrote it. Yeah. Just watch the whole series, I guess. How to display your data. Um, read records. Update records. Or just go to the data browser. Okay. I should probably explain this. Why didn't I um, share the link? Originally, I wanted to. Originally, uh, I wanted to let you guys do it. I don't want to share my code because I'm. I don't want you guys just to copy it and then be done with it. I I want you guys to create your create your own user creativity. And I know that sounds like I'm just being lazy, right? I don't want to put the link, or I'm probably being private. That's not the reason why I did that. It's because I just want people to do it themselves and create it but then i but then i started thinking about it and then i started realizing like hmm is that really right so that's why probably for two years now i finally shared the link for uh, and it's in this live stream i'm not putting it in the description they'll have to find it themselves but yeah <laughs> um yeah i know that sounds a little weird and it just sounds like, and you're probably assuming that I probably forgot it. I did not. There is a reason why I didn't add it. Because on the other videos, I did add it. Coding review lesson. Could you please make more videos? I did, actually. <laughs> uh, made actually a variety of videos. Uh, check that out. But that was six months ago. Um, I explained that. I'm making a game and you get a certain amount of coins. I've also created a login system like you and I have all my... I don't know how to make it work, make it so that it can stash the data together into one box. Ah, when you uh, do... So when you create a record, you can actually just go here, actually. So, uh, doo -doo -doo, great records, great records. What's a great record? Okay, here. Basically, what you will do is... Uh, let's see, where's one? So this bracket right here. You want to make it before the bracket. And you want to do um, comma. And then you want to enter exactly like this layout, basically. And then colon, and then to make sure to add the parentheses, and then two parentheses in the back if you're making a get text. By the way, if anyone has any questions on the live chat, you can also do that. I'm also checking that out. I don't understand that in which screen label 11 is. I did reply to it. Check that out because I don't remember <laughs> the video. Um, I don't understand that in which screen label 11 is. Oh, wait a minute. I can actually tell you that one. Um, each screen, you can actually go to the design tab, and right here, it tells you whether which what which one is which. 
That helps a lot. Check that out. Send the link of the code. Let's see what else. Uh, hello, KTech. Can you please tell me how to move sideways? Ah, that one. Okay. So, two fingers. So, when you're on the thing, uh, right here, you can use two fingers and you can go side by side. That's because the computer doesn't... Computers touchpad are getting smarter now, by the way. So, yes, they are changing. Or you could just, um, or you could just use a mouse. And you know the scroll? Uh, in the middle of your mouse, you can actually just uh, press it and then just move side by side. It might differ on um, Apple products and devices, um, like the Mac. Yeah, for that, uh, you may want to research that because I, I'm a Windows person. So yeah, check that out. Um, Make a part five. This is part five for the live stream. Please send a code. Actually, you know what? Because because uh, I'm right here anyways. I might as well. Reapply. There you go. All right. Anyways, um, why did we leave the parentheses space space parentheses doubt? All right. Uh, basically that's spacing. Yeah, you're just spacing it basically. That yeah. Um, when I put the account test and send it, it says send, but when I put my account name Ethan, it's not showing anything. Basically. Something is, uh, there's an issue with your code. So, uh, yeah, you may want to recheck the get text. You may want, yeah, you may want to recheck your get text and make sure that the read records code is correct. Uh, it's hard to say because I don't have a copy of the code. But, yes, you can do a get text and so, um, and check that out. Make sure the username is correct. Very bad. You did not show how to add, and uh, I will tell my friends not to watch your videos. Okay. Anyway, so let's go to the next one. Ah. Okay. Uh, for the My Nintendo Switch service experience. Ah. Okay. Ha. Huh. Okay. Well... There's actually a reason why. If you click the description, um, I said not it. The comments weren't working. It's because remember that time when uh Coppa wasn't um enforced that much. If you guys don't know what Coppa is, it's basically the children's um protection. It's to protect, yeah, it's to protect children from anything that's bad, inappropriate on the internet. So basically, Coppa uh hit YouTube very bad, and they made people enforced a thing for content creators where it, they have to say whether it's for kids or not and my video since it's nintendo uh the youtube assumed that it's for kids so i didn't know this for a while and then i found out eventually and it disabled all the comments that's why i wasn't able to reply to any so i'll reply to it now uh i sent my 3ds and it came from new york yes oh well oh that's cool came from new york huh Thanks, I just sent my Switch to get fixed, thanks to you. No problem. They fixed my... Do I have to call them first? Yes, you have to call them first. Do not just send it. They will give you the track... They will give you the shipping label, and so on. It's probably too late since I was one year. Sorry. I'm 15. They're going to need my parents' permission? Yes. Absolutely. They... Is it 18? I think it's... Yeah, it's 18. Uh, you have to be 18 to do this, because technically you're not old enough to technically do that. So, yes, you will need to. Um, but pretty sure that... 
I can tell you right now that you you can ship it. If you're in the United States, yes. If you know how to drive and stuff, um, you can or you can just bike all the way straight to the post office, something like that. Yes, you can ship it yourself, but they will need your parent permission. Um, sent it off yesterday. I hope Nintendo will call me with good news. Uh, that was one year ago. Sorry, I didn't reply. Basically, um, they won't call you they will they will call you if something happened that is bad check the tracking constantly um by the way on this this is only if you have your warranty uh if you don't have if you don't have a warranty anymore fix it yourself because clearly nintendo's issue on joy con drift is basically bad they haven't designed a controller, and I have I heard there was a lawsuit, but I haven't been checking it. Um, ship it global. This was my favorite series. I'm gonna do another random app making. Don't worry, it's not the last one. No questions, no problem. Yeah, cool. What's this? Uh, ship it global part two. Oh, sorry. I can't. Yeah, sorry about that. I purely am for educational purposes. Your comments. Oh, I remember this. Um, By the way, I don't think we're going to do any more math videos. I'm just going to say that right now. No problem. Uh... Okay. Can you make a video for the login system where it says username taken? Just did it? Part 5. And actually, I'm just gonna grab it. Because... Reply... Oh, wait. Um, okay, could you please just skip to the point? You wasted a lot of time in the beginning talking. I was getting impatient. Um, I wonder what I said. Okay, by the way, this is, uh, this was sarcasm, by the way. But anyways, um, I wish I could, but I can't. There's a lot of things that people need to understand on which is which. Maybe I was talking about something else, something unrelated to the point, but I'm not going to apologize for that. Uh, there's literally a fast forward, just fast forward. JavaScript app lab design. Thank you so much. Which country? US. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Could you make a website in web lab? Okay. Basically, to sum it up because I'm I can go on I can go on for this. To sum it all up, you're very limited on resources. It's better just to create it purely through text and upload it through sites, through hosting sites like GitHub. And I will be going over that. I have a live stream actually to, um, sometime to, uh, next, tomorrow, I think. Yeah. What's the purpose of the app? This app is Start and Go. It's basically just telling you whether you are available or not available because of the pandemic. You're working at home. How did you make the table? Go straight to the data br uh, browser and just click and just click the table name and add. Oh, I remember this one. We need to talk about AT&T. Yeah. 
That's cool. AT&T. Still hasn't fixed it. And it actually got worse because so 5G. That is the live stream. Okay, I'm just gonna go out of order. Content creator. It's no problem. Thank you for watching. That's really it. <laughs> this is the live. Oh, these are live videos, actually. I'm gonna skip these ones because most of them are not. Face reveal. That one was fun. Um, can you please make a game? Maybe I will make a game, actually. Huh. Well, I'll think of one. What kind of website is krpost.com? Okay, so there have actually been some updates for krpost.com, but for that, it's gonna be the next video. This website followed me. Yes, it does violate copyright law. I'm not a lawyer. I can't say I'm a lawyer, and I'm, but I'm telling you right now I'm not a lawyer. Um, but just really right now, copyright law. Yes, it is violating it because we don't know whether those ads are gave, giving revenue to the person that created Carapost.com. Even though it's embedding videos, it's still illegal. Basically, removing the channel uh, from Carapost.com basically is just to remove embedding altogether. Otherwise, you're stuck, basically, um, if you don't want to remove embedding. There is a way to, but uh, and I would Google that, because, yeah. Um, is this illegal? Because my friends... Yes, but it's not illegal for you. Like, you're okay. You're not. They're not going to pursue legal action on you on your video. If that is your video, basically, it's illegal for them, but not you. My technology opinion. How to build an HTML and CSS. The basics. Unless this is the unlisted video. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. I do really appreciate that uh, programming channels are watching. If, uh... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do appreciate it because, you know, I want everyone to know programming. Some type of programming. Okay, well... I can see there's no more questions. So, okay. Well, I do appreciate it for everyone to watch, uh, watching. Um, and yeah, uh, we will be show, uh, we will be going over code.org app lab tutorials again, number six. Uh, I don't know when. I would like to do it soon because there are a ton more updates we can do on this. But basically, yeah. So thanks for everyone watching, and uh, see you later.